the reason I'm telling you this is because I want you to pay specific attention for your healing now of your entire body. I want you to pay specific attention to what I'm about to share with you about this gut. Good morning and welcome to all my faithful Trinity International family. Your association with me and our ministry and my family, um, I take it very dear to my heart. Thank you for being there for us and for being part of our ministry family. Thank you. God bless you. Um, last week, we shared some deep thoughts on the kingdom of God versus the kingdom of self and the self God, the God of self comes against and directly against the kingdom of God. When we assert the God of self above the kingdom of God then the enemy will be able to uh, infiltrate into our lives. The hand of God will not be able to intervene on your behalf when you encounter difficulties. So I urge you, beloved, if you haven't heard the sermon, uh, for reasons that we've went through extensively before. Uh, this sermon is available on Rumble and I want you to go there and so that you can bring yourself up to speed as to where we are. It is a pivotal teaching for you to enter into 2024 with this new attitude and I'm going to um, incorporate the teachings of the last few weeks into whatever we're sharing this morning. But, uh, you know, I'm, I'm holding on with online for now and one of the main reasons is my gut tells me something and it's been speaking to me for a while and so I'm just dragging my heels until I have the freedom of spirit. Uh, and, and, and one of the justifications that I now see entering into the realm of the world, there's an independent article from the United Kingdom and it's all over. You don't have to have that article. But between you and I now, on the 15th of January, uh, that would have been a few days ago from when you're hearing this, the world leaders once again met at the World Economic Forum's Davos retreat where they discuss the future of the world and plans and decisions are concocted in this meeting. I should rather more blatantly put it to say that the message from the top gets filtered through to these world leaders at that meeting. So between you and I now, the decisions have already been made and it needed to be filtered through to those affiliated to the people of the cabal. Now this independent article confirms this meeting, but there's something interesting I want you to take note of at this meeting be being discussed as a priority. World leaders to meet to discuss threat of hypothetical disease X um, in Davos. Disease X is ranked as a priority for awareness campaigning by the alongside the C19 and all the other uh, very dangerous pathogens. 
world leaders meeting in Davos for the World Economic Forum this week are set to discuss concerns about the potential for a future that could cause 20 times more fatalities than the C-19. Now, we've had officially, unofficially we have no clue. There have been over 20 million deaths due to this thing that we had in the last few years. If you're going to measure 20 times more than that, we're looking at close to half a million people that will be removed from the planet because of this new uh, hypothetical uh, disease X. In a session entitled Preparing for Disease X, a panel led by the uh, chief Dr. Tedros Anandam Gebrehesus will talk about novel efforts needed to prepare healthcare systems for the multiple challenges ahead. If we are to ready for a much more deadly, like the World Economic Forum said. To be clear, scientists don't yet know what kind of uh, bug might lead to the next or in other words what disease X will turn out to be. Many people think it could be like the one we've had or a new strain of influenza. An MSN article tells us something else. Deadly disease X symptoms, prevention and is it really worse than what we had? What is known as disease X? In February, now note the date, 2018, this was before this disease that broke out in the world in 20, end of 2019, the created the name disease X to replace an unknown hypothetical pathogen that could trigger an outbreak in the future. Now, the article continues, a community of more than 300 scientists met in November 2022, note the date, this was in the middle of what we were already experiencing to study an unknown that was yet to come that could cause a horrific international that would see death rates 20 times higher than those of the C-19. The hypothetical threat known as disease X is a term used by scientists to help develop protective measures that include pokes as well as all tests that would imp be implemented in the event of a future. Now, something that boggles the mind. If I do not know what type of sickness is going to come upon me, how do I formulate a, a, con a cocktail of medication? How do I manufacture something that would beat and combat against the sickness? If I don't know what the sickness is, but they're doing it. And let's read what the uh, research institute in the same article tells us. In August 2023, that's last year, end of last year, so the UK government established a research institute to conduct research and poke against potential pathogens of disease X. The symptoms that you will get will be fever, muscle cramps, fainting, neck pain, back pain, headache, swollen eyes and sensitivity to light. Now, if I don't know what sickness is going to be, I don't know how it is known what the symptoms will be. And, and you know, the irony of the entire thing just boggles the mind. It continues, you may also experience nausea, vomiting, abdominal discomfort, diarrhea and sore throat. This may be followed by mood swings and confusion. After a few days, the excitement may turn into drowsiness and anxiety and the liver may become enlarged. 
Additional signs and symptoms include heart palpitation, swollen lymph nodes, petechial blisters on the skin and internal surfaces of the saliva such as in the mouth and throat. And the fourth or fifth day of illness, patients may develop organ failure. In the second week of the disease, some patients die. After the ninth or tenth day of illness, most survivors begin to recover. How many people are dying from the X? Medical experts estimate that disease X could kill up to 50 million people, which is a very low estimate, as I said, 20 times the 20 is close to 400 million. As C19 becomes an increasingly common and recurring health problem, UK healthcare professionals are now preparing for a possible new. And other, another opera news article, I'm taking the time to do this so that I can help you to see what's coming before it comes. And to understand the deep things of the world and uh, the underhanded, nefarious tactics and dealings of certain people that we've discussed in detail before. This Oprah News article confirms, scientists have also said that disease X is as infectious as measles with a fatality rate of uh, that sickness and the preparations are at hand. So they're preparing for it as we speak. Medics are reported, reportedly anxious that a new could be caused by a, a bug and are developing pokes already. Work on a poke is being carried out at the government's high security port, Porton Down Laboratory Complex in Wiltshire which is the UK Health and Security Agency Science and Defence Technology Campus by a team of more than 200 scientists. Hopefully, we can prevent it. But if we can't and we have to respond, then we already have started developing pokes and therapeutics to crack it. Around the world, countries have pledged a total of 1.5 billion dollars to help scientists prepare for disease X. The UK government has pledged 160 million alongside pledges from Japan. These are all the cabal countries now, the top six and eight in the world. Germany, Australia, United States and Norway as well as, I put this in red, the Gates Foundation and the Wellcome Trust. These are private organizations we spoke much in detail about. Now, when these people go behind something, that usually tells you from our experience in the last few years, when something is discussed beforehand, that means something is going to come. Nobody will invest something, uh, so much of money, if nothing is to come out of it. So, as much as you going on with life as normal, there has to be a prayerful watch so that you do not fall victim. You need and I need to be vigilant and wise and we need to walk in this wisdom so that the hand of God can always watch over us. Now as I've mentioned to you before, there are certain things in life we as humans have to engage in. We have to go to work. We have to go to certain places. But there are certain places we don't have to go. And so, when we use wisdom to keep ourselves protected from what the devil wants to throw at us through his agents, we engage the, God, the hand of God over us. And this is why I want to draw you in 2024 closer to God. And I'm going to help you to understand how to navigate this world without seeing with your eye or hearing with your ear what is to come. This 
poke that is being prepared for something they really don't know what is going to be. It's being prepared. I just want to show you a few seconds of a video clip where the slab is actually and what's happening inside. Just a few seconds. Now, beloved, I'm going to take you to discover something about ourselves, parts of which I've shared in 2021. And uh, I'm going to refer to an article from the government health website. And these are all things recorded in the science journal as fact and clinical studies have been done. So we can assume that everything they're sharing with us has been verified and studied. <clears throat> the, the human gut microbiome in health and disease. The bacterial cells harbored within the human uh, gastrointestinal tract called GIT in short, outnumber the host cells by a factor of 10 and the genes encoded by the bacteria resident within the gut outnumber the host genes by more than a hundred times. These human digestive tract associated microbes are referred to as the gut microbiome. The human gut microbiome and its role in both health and disease has been subject of extensive research establishing its involvement in human metabolism, nutrition, physiology and immune function. Imbalance of the normal gut microbiota have been linked with gastrointestinal conditions such as inflammatory bowel disease which is IBD and irritable bowel syndrome IBS and wider systematic manifestations of disease such as obesity, type 2 diabetes and atopy. Atopy is things like asthma, skin rashes, skin conditions, sinuses and a heightened uh, immune function. That means your immune, immune system attacks your own cells and could happen in cases of hypothyroidism or hyperthyroidism or liver disease or whatever it is. Now, to summarize in our own layman's terms, inside your stomach or just below that, in the side of it, starts your large intestines going into, so you have intestines. Your intestines is the most, mm, I can, I'm not using this word correctly, but just for you to understand, unhygienic place in your entire body. Inside that gut, it's called a gut now. Inside that gut is over a hundred trillion um, bacteria and fungi that live inside there. Starts when you are born and the number keeps growing. Besides the number of, the number of, uh, let's use the word bugs, the number of bugs that are inside there good bacteria and bad bacteria. It's more than what your genes are inside there. That's what this article tells us. But there's not one type of good bacteria, one type of bad bacteria. There's a diverse number of good and bad bacteria. Now, God made us this way. It is natural. There's nothing unnatural about it. It's good and bad inside the gut. And when there's a balance of good and bad bacteria, your whole health is perfect. When there's an imbalance in the number of good and bad bacteria, 
Sometimes the numbers are too high of good and too high of bad or, too, or whatever the combination might be. But also there's a problem with the diversity. That means the different types of bacteria. If there's less types, instead of the normal range or types that are there, you are becoming unhealthy. And when you have an unhealthy gut, it leads to things like diabetes and what I spoke about, atopy and all sorts of obesity and all sorts of things that in fact every organ in your body is affected every organ from your liver to your pancreas to your stomach to your heart to your brain to your skin every organ your ovaries your testes um, your muscles every organ in your body is directly affected by the number of microbiome in your gut and the variety so if you have an unhealthy gut it will show up in a sickness in one of your organs now you know when doctors tell you you have diabetes or you have liver disease now it usually means one of many reasons but one of the reasons is if you have diabetes your pancreas is not making enough insulin and the reason your pancreas is not making enough insulin is because the gut there's an imbalance in the gut so what they do is they treat your pancreas to make more insulin but they don't go to the root cause which is the gut now if you go to the gut and you sort that out your, he your healing is instant well not instant but it's on its way so I want to the reason I'm telling you this is because I want you to pay specific attention for your healing now of your entire body whether it be obesity whether it be liver disease or whether it be heart disease all these things that you have with your prop, with your with your body including alzheimer's and any other brain disorders mood swings or whatever i want you to pay specific attention to what i'm about to share with you about this gut we'll read the next part of this article metabolism now metabolism in in layman's terms between you and i is the amount of energy usage by every organ how your organ uses energy that it gets from the sugar or whatever energy sources you have the the way that it uses these your organs use this is known as use this energy is known as metabolism and if you have good metabol metabolism it means that your organs are using it effectively if you have a poor heart condition it means that your heart is not using this energy your metabolism is affected it's the same thing with any other hormone that you have that is produced by an organ metabolism let's read the gut bacteria are able to produce a variety of vitamins synthesizes all essential and non-essential amino acids and carried out carry out bio transformation of bile as a side note if your gut this is telling us now if your gut is good well functioning your microbiome is in good condition your gut is able to make vitamins that you will normally take as a supplement or from a food so even though you don't eat food certain foods with the certain vitamins that your body needs your gut makes it on its own it also makes energy cells like amino acids so so your gut is actually a very big boss the article continues host protection and immune system development now before i read to you this article to confirm what i'm saying i'll explain it in layman's terms you know when you get an infection like this disease X that might come uh, that infection generally ends up in your gut from the throat it goes down to the gut now 
in order for you to get very sick it needs to start in the gut and eat you from the inside going out and the way that this disease that comes in whatever bacteria comes into your body it has to attach itself to the wall of your intestine and when it attaches to the wall then it's able to penetrate right into your blood now wait this microbiome these bugs good and bad bacteria that is inside your gut when the numbers and the variety are in the right uh, balance they attach to the wall it is a competition for the space in your wall of your intestine and before the disease that is in your body the foreign thing that comes in can attach to the wall these microbiome they go and attach to the wall first and and so the the fungi whatever you go, bacteria you brought into your body from the sickness it doesn't have space to attach your microbiome takes up all the space it's like a defense mechanism against disease that comes from the outside so it's important once again for you not to get sick from things from the outside or to be less affected by these things let's put it this, to, to survive these attacks you have to have a healthy number or healthy gut so let's read this portion that confirms what i'm saying many intestinal bacteria produce antimicrobial compounds and they compete for nutrients and sites of attachment in the gut lining thereby preventing colonization by pathogens this action is known as the barrier or competitive exclusion effect see they gave it a name this is how important those good and bad bacteria are now some of this i mentioned before as i said in 2021 and this is why it's healthy for you to go back and watch all the sermons one at a time choose a weekday and say let me watch one on a wednesday and one on a thursday if i join this ministry late but i'm going to talk in the next part of this article about a great gut brain access but i'm going to give you layman's terms before i confirm the scientific data because i don't want to say something without letting you see that this is what the medics are, have told us there is a direct connection and i spoke in detail about this before between your gut and your brain it's and and this access is is um achieved via the vagus nerve and i spoke to you about that in detail before so from your gut messages go to your brain but this message is bidirectional from your brain it also comes down to your gut so your brain can send messages to your gut and your gut in turn sends messages to your brain that's called the gut brain axis now we'll read this portion the gut brain axis is a communication system that integrates neural hormonal and immunological signaling between the gut and the brain offering the intestinal microbiota and its metabol metabolites a potential route through which to access the brain foster and mcveigh these are all you know uh scientists that have wrote these articles and published them have reviewed key findings showing underline this now this is so important that stress influences the composition of the gut microbiota and that bidirectional communication between the gut microbiota and the central nervous system influences a host's stress reactivity now in our words you know low people this this number of good and bad the balance of bacteria in your gut it has a direct relationship with the stress that you feel in your daily life Let's stop for a moment. I'm jumping the gun, but I thought I'll just share it here now. Do you remember I spoke to you 
about the cares of this world. The cares of this world is a direct result or results directly into the stress you feel. The cares about your boss sitting on you, about the work that you have to accomplish at work, about the people you work with that don't like you, about the food that you need to supply in your home, about the salary that's not good enough to pay your bond. There is the people that speak about you and you can't do anything, the gossip that goes around. All these stresses, the problems your husband is giving you or that your wife doesn't have the right feelings for you and it makes you feel like this, all these things. The cares of this world causes stress. That stress affects the microbiome inside your gut. That affects your mood. And that affects all your organs. And so people with a lot of stress, in other words, they care about this world so much and what happens to their physical life that the stress gets to them. And that stress which is in the mind now, brain, it goes down the vagus nerve and communicates with the gut. And then the gut microbiome gets an imbalance. And then the messages from the microbiome or the gut goes to all the organs and people start to have all sorts of sicknesses. I want you to see a new meaning of the phrase when Jesus said this. If you love your life, he's talking about the one on earth here. He's talking about the one that gives you stress, the one that creates you to care for the world. If you love your life, you will lose it. And so, people with, who carry a lot of stress will get a lot of sicknesses. And they will die prematurely. So Jesus' words is not just loosely spoken into the atmosphere without the reason behind why he said it. And I'm repeating the master's words to you. Let the cares of this world diminish. In other words, the self-God kingdom. Let it diminish and this fasting period must make it, you must make it a priority for that to be the top of the agenda. If something happened last year that stressed you out, when it's happening this year, you must not react. That last sentence of line of science that we just read says this. Bidirectional communication between the gut, microbiota and the central nervous system influences a host stress reactivity. So I want you to react differently so that you keep the gut microbiome balance intact. That someone that talks about you and you get stressed about. Someone that doesn't love you but pretends to love you and hurts you behind your back. Those people are not worth losing your life over. I want you to see it like it is. Let's go deeper. Some, these are some of the things we learned before as well. But we'll refresh our memories. The Science Direct article tells us this. They go even further. They tell the gut feels... The gut smells and the gut talks. The brain smells and feels and talks and tastes. The gut brain signaling plays a central role in a range of homeostatic processes. Your bowels, that means your gut, send a signal to the brain to allow taste. <coughs> 
you know, this sounds funny, but science is telling us this. The reason why you like certain things and how they taste has nothing to do with your tongue. It has very little to do with your brain. That comes from your gut. The filthiest part, I'm using this very loosely, please forgive me for saying it. The filthiest part, your intestines, your gut. That's where all the, the waste products come out through. That place is responsible for how you taste food. It's like the gut tells you, I don't like this, don't send it in here. There are cells inside the walls of the intestine or the bowls called lumen that secrete neurotransmitters or messages to the brain. So it actually tells your brain. So when you don't like something, when you look at it or before you eat it, it's not your brain telling you, it's the gut telling the brain to tell you, don't eat that thing. Now, you know, sometimes you might take this with a pinch of salt. I don't want you to. You know the products they're making on the shelves nowadays? It all is modified from the gene level. It's got organisms in them. When you read in the back of certain products, you'll see, like the Kellogg's that we use to normally love and eat, the Pro-Neutro brands, the, the chocolate pronutro that was, smells better than it actually tastes. All these things like the, 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 the chips, uh, some of the products we eat, um, Doritos and Fritos and knickknacks and all these things. If you look at the back now, they have... Now, when your gut knows about these... Now, your gut knows things that your brain still has to figure out. Your brain only knows when it sees with the eye and hears with the ear. But your gut knows without seeing and without hearing. Your gut knows. And so, you know when Paul was on that ship that was about to be wrecked because of the storm, the, the, the captain and the people who were driving the slaves, they were all experienced seamen. And they could see the weather was clear. And they used their head experience. But Paul used his gut. And they call it prophecy. Uh, he used his gut. His gut was telling him, there's going to be a storm ahead and many people are going to be lost at sea if you continue sailing. Obviously, you know the story. They didn't listen to him and his gut was correct. So, your gut knows things subconsciously that your brain hasn't really realized. And, you know, women have a very generally a very healthy gut and they will be able to pick up signals your gut the gut woman's guts that men are numb to that's why women are more selective of what they eat men can eat anything even off food one day off they'll eat it uh, because they 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 have the the, the woman's gut is sensitive that's why when when friends, you make friends with somebody, they didn't do anything. They didn't say anything. But your wife knows those are not good people. Where does she get that from? You wanted to explain because your eyes didn't see and your ears didn't hear. But her gut tells you, tells her to tell you and warn you. But many times you don't listen and many times you fall into this big hole. Now, you know, sometimes you might have experienced this. I, I know every human being that has a soul would have experienced this. You know, sometimes there's a, so, a silent voice that sends a message from down here to up here and tells you, you know, don't make that decision. Uh, don't go to that place today. And many people ignore that. 
Because you see, that knows before this figures out. And when you go and when you don't listen to that voice, you 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 get yourself into some kind of problem and difficulty, and then you said, you know, I had the feeling I shouldn't have done that, but I just went ahead and did it anyway. You know, I need to listen more to that voice. That voice is called your conscience. It is something that belongs to the to the soul. It lives. We know we lives in the pineal gland, the seat of the soul. But more, that's the seat of the spirit. The seat of the soul is your conscience, which lives inside your gut, and it speaks volumes when you let it speak. But sometimes the decisions it asks you to make, you brush it off simply because it is a tough decision to make. Think about what I'm saying. Your gut knows what you need to do. But your brain tries to figure out, if I do this, what's going to happen to my children? What's going to happen to this? How am I going to survive? That is what I'm asking you to do. That gut spoke long time ago. And you got yourself into deeper and deeper because you didn't listen to that gut. Let's continue reading. This message is that come between the brain and the gut. It continues, helps the brain to manage the secretion of serotonin. You know, we spoke much about this. It's a happy hormone. It keeps your mood happy. So, when the messages from your gut doesn't, when you, let's put it this way, when your gut microbiome isn't in healthy condition, balanced, it cannot send a message to the brain to make serotonin. And so, when that hormone is low, you have a depression, you have anxiety, you have all sorts of things. But where does it start? You know, the doctors will give you serotonin supplements to help your mood, your depression go away. They're treating the sore without treating the cause of the sore. The cause of the sore is where? Inside here, the gut. Serotonin is the key hormone that stabilizes our mood, feeling of well-being and happiness. This hormone impacts your entire body. It enables brain cells and other nervous system cells to communicate with each other. So, in order for your heart to communicate with your pancreas and your pancreas to... In other words, in order for you, even your immune system to be activated, to communicate to wherever the sickness is, it doesn't work because your gut microbiome is imbalanced. Serotonin also helps with sleeping, eating and digestion. So if you have a lot of stress, you will have a problem with your gut. And your gut won't tell the brain to make serotonin. And serotonin not made it high, you won't be able to sleep, you won't have good digestion, you'll have all sorts of complications. So I want you to understand the importance of this organ that God put in you called the gut. Now, these cabal people we spoke about before, these Edomites, Ashkenazi uh, people, the ones that run the world and make decisions, the 2% that own the majority of things in the world sit on the highest government posts. We're going to talk about them for a moment, but we'll start with this. I shared this before. I'm updating you. The web, a website, you know, science disease website tells us, while people from any ethnic group can develop genetic diseases, Ashkenazi Jews are at a higher risk for certain diseases because of specific gene mutations. So this is in their genetics. Scientists call this propensity to develop, to develop disease the founder effect. Hundreds of years ago, Mutations occurred in the genes of certain Ashkenazi Jews. Now the founder effect. Put simply, the founder effect begins with a mutation or change in a gene in one person in a small community. So it starts with one person and it can continue. If, it's, if, it has, if there's more people, more people will pass it in their genes to their children. So according to this article, it tells us that this disease is most common among Ashkenazi Jews and it started somewhere hundreds of years ago in one member of the community. Let's read. Ashkenazi Jews, this particular population is a high risk for Crohn's disease. This is the 
the, the bowel problem, the problem with the, with the gut. Crohn's disease, according to experts, Crohn's disease is two to four times more prevalent among people of Ashkenazi ancestry. There is no cure, by the way, for, for this disease, what they have, Crohn's disease. Uh, it has to do with the irritation and inflammation of the bowels, which means that they don't have a balanced microbiome. And there is no explanation for it, according to science, no explanation for why even the first person that was affected in the community hundreds of years ago, why, why they had it. And up to this day and age, there is no cure for it. So when you look at these Edomites, and I showed you a video before that Mr. Gates has this problem. Um, you won't play that now. But if you look at all these people, in the, they have a sickness which affects all the different parts of and organs of their body. Many of them use the DMT, the blood, that they, that's why they, they, they want to put like blood inside of them to rejuvenate um, uh, the signals in their body so their organs don't fail. But that's another story. I want you to read where this thing started from and what it is. Second Chronicles chapter 21. Jehoshaphat slept with his fathers, that means he died, and was buried with his fathers in the city of David. And Jehor Jehoram, his son, reigned in his place. He had brothers, the sons of Jehoshaphat, Azariah, Jehiel, Zechariah, Azariah, Mikhail, and Shef Shephatiah. But he gave the kingdom to Jehoram because he was the firstborn. When Jehoram had ascended the throne of his father and was established, he killed all his brothers with the sword, this evil man, and also some of the princes of Israel. Jehoram was 32 years old when he became king. And he reigned for eight years in Jerusalem. And he walked in the ways of the kings of Israel, as the house of Ahab had done. Evil, that means. For the daughter of Ahab was his wife, and he did what was evil in the sight of the Lord. Moreover, he made high places in the hill country of Judah, and led inhabitants of Jerusalem into whoredom, and made Judah go astray. And a letter came to him from Elijah the prophet saying, Thus says the Lord, the God of David your father, Because you have not walked in the ways of Jehoshaphat your father, but have walked in the way of the kings of Israel, and have enticed Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem into Hodom, as the house of Ahab led Israel into Hodom, and also you have killed your brother, who were better than you, Behold, the Lord will bring a great plague on your people, your children, your wives, and all your possessions. And you yourself will have a severe sickness with a disease of your bowels until your bowels come out because of the disease day by day. And after this, the Lord struck him in his bowels with an incurable disease. In the course of time, at the end of two years, his bowels came out because of the, the disease and he died in great agony. Now beloved, this is where the gut sickness came from. And it was caused because of the evil. Now what was, what was this king, what, what is Hordom they talking about? He was asking the Judah, the residents of Judah, he was asking all of Israel to climb a hill and pay homage to a foreign god. And this god calls Hodom. This is why I ask you, when you see the god of self show up, that's Hodom. That God has no place competing with the kingdom of God. That kingdom must die. I am not even going to mention 
serving a foreign god i'm talking about this whoredom and that whoredom will start to cause sicknesses starting from the bowel inside the intestines there's going to be an attack and slowly but surely that attack in the, in the imbalance is going to affect organs of your body so i want you to start with rectifying the god of self and putting in its place the god the kingdom of god jesus christ now you remember judas the same thing happened to judas because evil was found in him and his bowels came gashing out according to luke in the book of acts now let's read this now this man purchased a field with the wages of iniquity and falling headlong he burst open in the middle and all his entrails gushed out see until now there is no cure now i want to because this is such an important thing i want to dig deeper so you have a a complete understanding and you don't forget it once again science journals tell us the gut microbiome communication the gut organ axis so before i read it i want to tell you that the gut besides having communication with the brain it has direct communication with every organ in your body every organ there is an accumulating evidence supporting the relationship between the gut human gut microbiome and organ function outside the gut Reaches, researchers have coined the term axis to describe the bi or multi-directional pathways through which the one part of the body biochemically communicates with another part of the body <clears throat> better health tells us it is understood that there are links between the gut health and the immune system so unhealthy gut unhealthy immune system mental health autoimmune diseases that means your own antibodies attack your own cells endocrine disorders such as type 2 diabetes gastrointestinal disorders such as irritable bowel syndrome and inflammatory bowel disease that's what the eskenazis have ibd heart problems cardiovascular disorders cancer sleep digestion Now the signs of an unhealthy gut is confirmed to be stress too little sleep lack of physical activity eating too many ultra processed foods smoking and drinking and taking antibiotics so these are the physical things that you need to change but on the top of that list you have seen stress which is why worry about tomorrow when tomorrow will take care of itself why worry about the clothes you wear when you can see that even solomon in all his splendor is not clothed like one of the flowers in the field why do you worry because even the birds which don't pray and intercede and stand on the trees and gather together in a uh, prayer meeting on a 7 o'clock in the evening and they don't have no bible sessions and all they they food is provided for them and it's hard to get a sickly bird unless it flies into your window or in your car so so these things god is saying he spoke to us in different different ways he says this stress is going to it 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 shows that you care about your life it shows that uh, you're going to let this thing choke wisdom choke jesus out of you that's what jj you know it chokes you know that the seeds were scattering on the ground and it didn't fall on good ground and and the bible says jesus spoke words he said it chokes wisdom out of you in other words it chokes jesus when you stress about something it chokes jesus out of you you have no jesus in you because you worry about the things of the kingdom of self so the stress i can't stress enough for you to make sure that this is what you work on in your fast don't work on it and fail a nice for the next couple of months and then august comes again you forgot what i shared with you now organ control is the next part of the article we said that it controls it makes vitamins let's look at just you know i'll just give you an idea 
Several bacterial genera that are common in the distal uh, inter intestine is bac bacteroids and all those funny names are known to synthesize vitamins, thymine, folate, biotin, riboflavin, pathothentic acid, that's vitamin B5, and are water-soluble vitamins that are plentiful in the gut, but they are also syn synthesized by gut bacteria. So your gut bacteria can make you stuff that even if you don't get it from, you know, you're poor, you can't afford certain vitamin products, you can't, uh, f certain vitamin foods, your gut makes it if you keep it happy. Now, let's look at folate deficiency, for example. Anemia is a lack of folic acid in the blood. Folic acid is a B vitamin that helps your body make red blood cells. If you don't have enough red blood cells, you have anemia. But beside anemia, red blood cells help you to carry oxygen to different parts of your brain, different parts of your organs. You start to get numbness, you start to get all sorts of feelings that, you know, no feelings. You put it in your leg, in your hands, feelings are gone because there's not enough oxygen because there's not enough red blood cells to carry that oxygen. So I want you to see how important all these things interrelated are, are to your health. Ecclesiastes 1.18 For in much wisdom is much grief and he who increases knowledge increases sorrow. I shared that with you before but I, you know there are certain decisions that I make as your pastor. The reasons I make it is because wisdom which speaks to me from here, from the gut. When it asks me to do something it can cause offense to many other people. But I've learned from my extensive experience not to follow here or what my eyes are seeing, what my ears are hearing. I've got to follow what's here. And so when I make these decisions, I make it with a heavy heart. And that's what it says. When you have knowledge, that wisdom you have that comes out, it makes you carry a heavy heart. The scripture tells us. It makes you, it brings much sorrow. But you, it's, it can't be avoided. If you're going to have wisdom, that's something you've got you to carry. You know, when you look at the world and how it's being destroyed, the fact that it's difficult to find fish that you can eat because of the contamination in the oceans. It's difficult to find food that is not chemically changed, genetically changed and altered. You, you know, when you look at... God's world is gone. It brings much sorrow also to the heart. And, uh, but, you know, it's part of ha having wisdom. And, you know, blocking it out or ignoring it, uh, it, it's not a choice. So, I, I want you to have that in the back of your mind when you consider people of wisdom. Now, a clinical study, we continue with the Everyday Health article. The trillions of microbes that live in our GI tract make up our body's microbiome. A healthy microbi microbiome has a wide range of bacteria, fungi and other microorganisms. When the diversity of organisms decrease, this community's delicate balance is disrupted. Some re researchers such as, a such as a study in 2022 issue of Frontiers in Microbiology Biology, has found a link between unhealthy microbiome and chronic conditions such as obesity, heart disease, type 2 diabetes, a less diverse microbiome, that means a number of different types if it's less, has also been linked to frail, uh, frailty, inflammation, neurodegenerative disorders such as Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's and so forth. Emotions play, may play a role in maintaining the microbiome. The findings show that the women who suppressed their emotions, this is a clinical study they did, had a less diverse gut microbiome. Those who reported greater feelings of happiness and hopefulness had lower levels of firmicutes and bacterium and uh, the other bacterium, D16. People who reported more negative emotions had more of these bacteria. Healthy gut means more diverse microbiome and less of the bad bacteria. Now, in essence, what is this telling us? It's telling us that if you are happy, that means that you don't allow the cares of this world to give you stress. That even if they are there, so what? 
even if your husband is leaving you and you feel you older now where are you going to find someone so what you don't need anybody put your nice lipstick on wear nice dresses even if you don't have good new ones wear walk with your head held up so what if you lose something physically it belongs to this world it's a care of this world let it go so what if you keep a healthy attitude of the mind and take every thought that comes against the kingdom of god you suppress it and you said no this is not going to make me depressed not anymore even when you get news that your body is not working properly some organ is failing say to yourself so what in fact it does the opposite it will heal that organ but by you concern about it stressing about it and then you go for prayer meetings and you bring it up three times a week on the prayer meeting that is focusing on it it's a thing of this world this this is dust it's a thing of this world you got to say lord who cares you are my god and i want that attitude to be a part of your new 2024 nature. You know one John tells us, do not love the world or the things of in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. And then Jesus quotes which I read to you before. Now, all these things, the stress of this life, of this world, the kingdom of self, they cause a gut that is dysfunctional we learned that word very early on 3 two months ago or so they cause the gut to become dysfunctional and a dysfunctional gut causes dysfunction everywhere now let me use a less euphemistic term Worrying about the cares of this world causes not dysfunction brings evil that's the word for dysfunction evil right into your gut where your soul resides and if your soul resides there and you bring evil in there so goes the soul and so that gut intuition you supposed to have is gone that's why people who stress they don't realize they actually invited evil to come and sit in their gut because what's this functional their gut and when evil sits in the gut that's why the intuition they get it's all wrong it's lead to wrong decisions because they cannot make good choices and this is why i'm asking you it starts with the stress now let's see what proverbs tell us we read this many times a merry heart does good functional a merry heart makes everything functional like medicine heart means lab in hebrew lab is in a man mind heart understanding you know when my heart is sore you know uh, where you, you know that's why when you when you nervous about something you're not nervous in your head you feel butterflies over here because that's where your conscience is that's where your 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 soul resides it resides there it talks from there it sees from there it gives you instincts from there and when you let evil in now merry heart it's interpreted by different people to say laughter is as medicine is good laughter is good like medicine merry heart now i want you to make a concerted effort i want you to do a lot of laughing laugh your problems away every day find something to cheer you up 15 20 times a day if you can and not in pastor i don't know what to do to make myself laugh i don't know what to listen you you know how to make money you know how to do other things F- 
Ask God, lead me Lord, so that my inner man, my heart, you know, my heart. That's why God doesn't say my brain, my heart. He's talking about me. That's because that's where the inner man lives. The inside, the soul of a man. I want you to have a, a new outset. A new thinking. You know, that's why sometimes when your girlfriend leaves you, when you have problems, it seems like somebody punched a hole in your gut. It's like somebody ripped your guts out. You know that expression, my heart is sore. That, uh, that large intestine starts just below that. It's the next organ next to your heart, by the way. And that's why you put your hand here. Oh, I can't believe I'm so sore. My heart is so broken. That's because your, 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 your intestines are broken. Not your heart, your intestines are broken. That's where the inner man is. That's what the heart is. So, our assignment during this fast. You know, I already spoke to you about the fast. If you want to know about it, go last week and listen. The Daniel fast. This is what I want you to concentrate on. Stress out. Cares of this world out. Self God out. Lot of laughing. Find a place to do it. Find a way to do it. Enjoy the people that love you. And enjoy them with laughter. In some way, find a way. Even if it's not outblown laughter. You know, you know sometimes laughter from the stomach. Ooh, when your stomach hurts. And this is why your soul gets so happy. It actually pains when you laugh. When you have a hearty laugh. That, that's what I want you to try and access. But even if you don't reach that, at least have a happy, content, unbroken spirit. And I want you to heal yourself during this year in this way. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for the love of Christ. I thank you, Lord, that all the answers are deep within us. If we follow that voice, you will lead us into the parts that you designed for us. Let us walk into those parts now, Lord. I ask for your mercies and blessing in the name of Jesus Christ. And everybody said, Amen. God bless you, beloved. Have yourself a beautiful week. Pray for each other, pray for us, and be well in Christ. God bless you. Thank you.